Hot Springs Village Inside Out is a closer look at the greatness of Hot Springs Village, Arkansas and the surrounding areas, people, places, experiences. Hot Springs Village is one of the most beautiful places on earth. Join me, Randy Cantrell, and my co-host Dennis Simpson as we engage in weekly conversations to explore Hot Springs Village Inside Out. Today's show is brought to you by Central Arkansas's favorite radio station, KVRE. Find them on the dial at 92.9 FM. Stream them live at kvre.com. Remax of Hot Springs Village. The award-winning Remax of Hot Springs Village is the largest real estate office inside the village with over 30 full-time agents and support staff. Visit them to learn more about this beautiful place to solve your real estate needs. Call them today at 1-800-364-9007. Find them online at explorehsv.com. They are Remax of Hot Springs Village at 1-800-364-9007 or online at explorehsv.com. Ike Eisenhower State Farm. Ike and his award-winning team have been serving the insurance needs of folks all around Hot Springs Village since 1998. Ike has qualified for State Farm's President's Club, Chairman's Circle, and Hot Springs Village Insurance Agent of the Year. Call Ike Eisenhower State Farm today at 501-984-4100. That's 501-984-4100. Find them online at IkeEisenhower.net. Call them today for all your insurance needs because, like a good neighbor, Ike Eisenhower State Farm is there. On this side of the lake, calling to the bring the the uh, the Langleys, Miss Brenda and Mister George. How are y'all this morning? Good, super. I tell you what, it's a beautiful day here in the neighborhood in Hot Springs Village, and we're going to learn more about what it's like to be in the village, Brenda. Tell us what what do how did y'all get here? What did you do? Well, we have George has a friend who was here some years ago. He that he grew up with, uh-huh. and get, made a phone call to us one weekend and said, "What do you know about Hot Springs Village?" And we're going, "Well, not a whole lot." He <laughs> said, "Well, we just moved here. We just retired, and we moved here. Come spend some time with us." We did, and and that's how we got here. So that that was the short version, right? And the longer version was you sold everything and moved here and all that stuff, right? Took a while. <laughs> Took a while. We gave it away. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, Mr. Randy's in the same situation. He's done that here recently. And I think he said he donated 3,400 books to the local library. Oh. And because, uh, I mean, on one hand, it, maybe it's not as important to you as it used to be. But on the other hand, you don't want to throw it away, right? No. So where did you move? Where did you move from? Arlington, Texas. Texans, huh? Who knew, right? Who knew? (laughs) What what did you do in your former life, if I can? Well, I retired from IBM in the 90s. Uh And then I retired from American Airlines. American Airlines? Okay, yeah. So we actually purchased here in 2015. And I was still working. So George would come up here. And he tells the story that he would come up here and sleep on an air mattress while I was enjoying back in Texas. Full comforts of home. <laughs> and he, he still makes me regret that for a while. And then when I finally got retired, then moved up here full time in 2016. And George, on the other hand, has done everything. Tell him what all you've done. Oh, gosh, I don't know where to start. I was born and raised in Little Rock. Oh, really? Right. And so I, we did have an inkling about Hot Springs Village. And my, my buddy was a block down the street okay. uh, all the way through high school. And we went to college in different places. But anyway, um, I've been with IBM. I've been with, I started a software company and had it 13 years and sold it. Uh, Business development manager for Price Waterhouse Coopers, um, poker dealer in Las Vegas. So the moral of the story is you can't keep a job. That's what I'm hearing. <laughs> there you go. There you go. 
I mean, I mean, <laughs> so and then after and, we got here, we still flunked retirement. It, uh, it, apparently so. I was about to say for people who are trying to retire, you kind of stink at it. But uh, because yeah. let's, let's tell everybody what you do right now. Where are you presently at? We're with Remax of Hot Springs Village. And, and so <laughs> husband, wife, uh, uh, real estate dealer, uh, uh, agents, right? That's true. We are a team. We are a team. Um, I've been there for going on my fifth year. And George came along later. Um, he actually tell him what you were doing when I. He had to recover from sleeping on the air mattress. Hello. <laughs> it was actually it was a leaky air mattress. <laughs> getting into it at night wasn't nearly as difficult as getting out of it in the morning. In the morning, you just rolled off. You just kind of yep. got up, right? But, but we had no furniture here, so I, I didn't have I didn't have a handle. <laughs> I needed some way to get actually get on my feet and get up. That was. I'm glad there's no video of that. Well, I, I actually was at a, I was at Ponce one day and uh, I got out of the car and walked over and this lady said, I like your car. I said, I like your car. And uh, I said, uh, those little convertibles are kind of hard to get out of. She, time, she said, yeah, we have the no moaning rule. I said, what's that? <laughs> she said, when we're at home in the garage, getting in and out of it, we're like, oh, oh. but when we're in public, no moaning, you can't, you can't make any noises when you're getting out of the convertible. Okay. Um. That's so remember cool. that rule, okay, George? Okay, yes, we will. <laughs> we will. We will. <laughs> George was with the POA before he joined me with um, Remax. Tell him what you did. Well, I worked part time in the uh, uh, licensing and permitting group. Uh, I was a state licensed inspector uh, for for buildings in in the village. Worked two days a week. Uh, the rest of the time, I volunteered mostly with the uh, Chamber of Commerce. And um, uh, what we're going to talk about today actually and primarily came from uh, my activities at the Chamber of Commerce. And um, well, I can imagine, we'll, and, and we'll, I, we'll, we'll get I don't, to that. I don't mean to interrupt, but I can imagine, and this is just me, but I can imagine being a previous home inspector and also being a realtor now you can give your customers the better bang for the buck, right? Well, there's some synergies there, yes. Well, I mean, you can't inspect it for them, but you can right. say, well, you know, there could be some issues that the home inspector will find when he comes and looks at this or whatever, yeah. right? It yeah. adds credibility. Yeah, sure. That's a very good point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, and, and George, you, you touched on what we wanted to talk today about. Now, were we, were we wanting to talk about the video or the information guides or, or the welcome kits? What do you have in mind? Well, it's like that old pizza commercial with uh, Jerry Jones, both coach. Let's talk about both of them. <laughs> uh, actually, um, what came first was um, our our guide, if you will, to the village. The very first thing people would ask when they came in the uh, visitor center, uh, you know, and in some cases they'd driven all day long to be there. And the first question, well, actually, it's the second question. We won't go into the first, but the where's second... the bathroom? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't say that. But anyway, the second question was, where do we go to eat? Mm. Where do we go to eat? So I put together a guide to village dining. Mm. Okay. Um, and with that and everything else I've done, went the obligation to keep it current. Yeah, I was about to say, there's um, a lot of changes. Their whole man. Uh, there's just not enough white out in the world. <laughs> Have you anyway, tried the paragraph size? The paragraph size white out? The paragraph just... that I can't get the lid off. <laughs> but anywho, um, that came first. And basically, it was something to give them and say, okay, this is this is the village and the gate. You know, this is out the west gate. This is inside. This is out the east gate. And here are the, the dining places there and and a little bit about when they were open, um, the price point, not so much now on the price point part of it, but price points and uh, uh, just maybe some colloquialism to, to say how the quality of the food. And at that time and at this time, I do think that for the restaurants that are open and most of them are, have reopened, I think we've got we're in a good situation with the quality of our food food and our food service here. So now now 
would somebody need to call you to get this guide or can you email it to them? How, how would they reach you? Well, the, the guide, yeah, the guide has taken a, a new format and, and I'm going to hold that up if I, if I may, but, uh, this is what it looks like now. Okay. Uh, it's a book. It's a book. It's a book. Because the second thing that people asked for when they came in was, how do I see the village? Okay, I want to see the village. Yeah. Well, as a volunteer, I couldn't do much about it. And the rules at that time and still are that we want to uh, maintain the uh, sanctity of the gates. So if somebody shows up, you can't say, oh, yeah, I'll just go through here. I'll, I'll write you a pass and you can go through the gate and have a good look around and hope to see you again sometime. Because they might end up at uh, Balboa Beach with their swim trunks on uh, while they're just out looking around, if you know what I mean. Well, and that's, that's exactly. not the community that they can, they can the use. I think you're uh, I think you're uh, uh, probably touching on a real life story is probably what you're doing there but <laughs> cuz that's probably be. happened happened more than once. I had a friend from Little Rock one time I called him in a pass and I was like, you know, you got to go see this place it's incredible. And he came in the east gate, drove to the west gate and he said there wasn't a damn thing. I couldn't see anything. I'm like, well, it's cuz it's got trees, man. So, yeah. you know, the, the guide it, it's not a self perpetual not a self tour guide if you know what I mean. Exactly. Yeah, well, uh, we started out with a tour, uh, and it was on a map was on one side, and the dialogue uh, was on the other side, and it was a, a pretty high level, extremely high level document uh, that morphed into a uh, one page map, um, and now it's I think six pages of dialogue. Wow! And it starts on the uh, on the west side, the west gate, and brings you basically to all the golf courses, um, most of the amenities, and drops you off at Cortez Golf Course uh, with instructions on how to get out. But it's yeah. uh, it's fairly detailed. Um, <clears throat> what we recommend is um, uh, if somebody at home could actually take the guide, the the tour, and um, the instructions or the dialogue with it and enter the village hmm. with, at home. They can do it now though, because with uh, some professional help, we have a 21 minute video tour mm -hmm. of the village. It's called Tour Hot Springs Village with Brenda and George. And it is our tour, uh, our written tour. That's it. Yeah. Uh, our written tour of uh, that's now put to music and and um it's a beautiful area of photography and some drone footage and so forth and it takes a, it takes the same route and uh, our map in our uh handout is uh is color coded if you will it does have a yellow brick road to show the show the the trip through the village it only has the yellow brick road when it's the pollen season george you know that <laughs> A little bit on the green side. Bit, look, green, yeah. greenish, greenish yellow. Greenish yellow. Greenish. I tell you what, can we watch just a second of the video here? Please. Please. Okay, let, let's watch just a touch. And once again, and let me reinstate, and we'll have this link below. But tour the village with Brenda and George, and just find that on YouTube. I mean, tour Hot Springs Village with Brenda and George. And let me, I got to get there. This place looks pretty cool. <laughs> We we had this professionally done for us. It's um, very nice. What is, what is the name of it? The Design Consulting Groups did it here in the Design building. Consulting. Yeah. yeah, that's Danette. Yeah, it's wonderful. That's Great Danette. work. Yeah, she did this for us. Good work. And and just a little bit of bragging about it. We've had a lot more hits than we thought we would. Yeah. And it's been we've gotten calls from people from all over the United States and other countries who have seen it. So it's been very successful for us. Yeah, needless to say. Well, it's a great looking video. And, you know, it's funny you should say, where were we? We were, um, oh, I'm trying to think where the place was. We were someplace the other day and um, they were talking about the HOA fees. And it was, mm -hmm. a, uh, I think it was a 200 unit 
um, you know, gated community or whatever. And the HOAs were $440 a month or whatever. And I think the first, probably the third or fourth question, George, that comes up is, is how much and a hundred dollars a month with a home? Really? I mean, yeah. seriously, think that over and let that sink in people. Yes. And that's good because that's still part of the book. Um, so much a part of the book is um, not only is it the dining guide, but there's also a, a preface. It's Welcome to Hot Springs Village. And it was written by Bob Petty. Bob Petty is on one of the planning committees, impact, yeah. impact committee of uh, the village. So he's he's very involved at the POA. And it's a, it's a lovely description of the village. And then it goes to facts and amenities that are available in the village, the tour, and the area dining guide. And then the HSB clubs and organizations, that's a big deal because some of the people that we visit with at the visitor center, it's like, yeah, I'm a golfer. I love to play golf, but my spouse here, what is she going to do? Or what is he going to do? Mm -hmm. So we speak to all of the clubs that are available, clubs, amenities, churches, organizations, mm -hmm. whatever. And George has tried to contact all the club organizations to make sure that he's got good contact information in this document so yeah. it's got phone numbers it's got names phone numbers website um email addresses and he checks on that and that's a full-time job i bet i bet yeah. well now now do you and once again now you have the the brochure there is that a is that a pdf you can mail to somebody or how do you do that no, no they just, have to just, contact us and you, we would contact you how how would we do that two ways my email address is brenda langley at remax.net mm -hmm. pretty simple brenda langley at remax.net l-a-n-g-l-e-y just like it says on the screen there and or they can call me at 501-226-8781 and we will get them uh, a welcome package that'd be wonderful so 501-226-8781 or I bet you can call the Remax office and say, hey, I'd like to talk to Brenda or George. And they'll go, hang on, let me get George off the air mattress. He's back here. We'll go grab him. You got that right. <laughs> amen, amen, amen. And, and he's, he's done even more with the book. We go through the organizations. And you know, one of the other questions that we get what? is medical. Oh, I bet. I, yeah. You know, I've got a heart condition. You know, I need a good cardiologist. I need blah, blah. So he's put together a medical directory. That's mm -hmm. included in the book. And that's good for many people. I think a lot of people don't understand. Uh, we, I, Diane and I were walking the trails. We ran into a lady and said, you're Dennis. I was like, yeah. And people do this a lot. Like, you're Dennis. I'm like, well, of course I'm Dennis. I, 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 I've been my name my whole life. They tell George, hey, George, you're George. I'm like, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> lady, um, well, uh, you'd rather not use her name. I'm trying to remember. Uh, she said her and her husband were were transitioning here. She had just found out she had the very, 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 very beginning stages of breast cancer. It's easy to get. They're going to treat. And she said, and they were moving from Texarkana. And she said, we are thrilled, thrilled that we're going to be closer to UMS. And I thought, mm -hmm. oh, oh, because I, you know, I have a lot of friends that worked at UMS. I've done some work with them in the last 40 years and whatever. And I just think, well, yeah, it's a world-class health organization. Sure. Okay. Well, we take that for granted, don't we now? Yeah. Some wonderful organizations nearby. There, there really is. And and that's very important <clears throat> to people moving here, particularly if we have retirees coming here, that they either have a health issue or they expect a health issue. Yeah. And so George has done a good job of putting that information together. And one more thing in the book are the PLA rules and regs. No, yeah. we have rules. Oh, well, you know, sort of, sort of, kind of, <laughs> sort of, kind of, ish, sort of kind ish, of. ish. Yeah, we do. We do. But that's one of the questions I ask because, you know, folks either come from an HOA that they were miserable with. Oh, Lord. Yeah. Or they are firm believers in organization and rules and regs and what have you. So, again, that information is there. And he's just incorporated. Like I said, it's a book. Well, and, and let me make a note real quick, if I can. The, the answer to the question about the rules and regulations that I have sound resoundingly is moderation. 
we don't want to make you miserable. We're, we're not going to come out and measure the size of your satellite dish and go, you're two inches over. Uh, but at the same time, I don't want, as we had on Castellon over here, a brightly purple colored house that nobody <laughs> approved the paint color on. And, you know, uh, people ask me, and like I say, I've done this with y'all for 20 plus years for lot sales, at least for the lots that we sell by FISBO. Um, but for 20 plus years, people say, well, what does the ACC, what are they looking for? And I say, they're out to maintain and sustain the home values of the area. Amen. Well, what, well, but I want to paint, paint my cur- house purple and with pink uh, highlights, they're out to sustain and protect the values <laughs> of the property. If you don't like that, I understand, but there's an objective here, you know, and, and as we, before we hit the record button, I was talking with a group of people that unfortunately had their unit burn. We we have to have an overarching governance that says, okay, you got to do something with that. You can't just leave that for months on end or whatever. And, and we, we do need that kind of supervision. And George, you know, more than anybody, we need that kind of supervision, don't you? Oh, we do. And, and I think we have it. Um, one of the, as a realtor, I had a, we had a client that wanted to bring a geodesic home to the village. And the build globe. It. Yeah. 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 And yeah, yeah. quite honestly, uh, it, it, it's not going to be here for other reasons, but we actually got through the first, the first pass with the, uh, with the POA because based on where he wanted to build it, it was going to be the only house. Right. So it conformed. Mm-hmm. You know, of course, was, the future future conformity, I don't know how that would work out. Nothing else to conform to. There's nobody around you, right? Right. Uh, but they were, you know, I th- I felt that they were very open-minded Yeah. Uh, about looking at this and considering it. And uh, in some cases, I don't think that people in the village actually uh, understand that. Uh, appreciate it. And or appreciate uh, the, the understanding that we that we actually have our leadership here yeah and i think part of the problem is that nobody wants to everybody well here everybody wants to go to heaven nobody wants to die right (laughs) so everybody wants my area to look this way but when i get ready to put in a pig farm y'all shouldn't stop me right come on it's just a few pigs right and i'm I'm not talking about hog gate i'm just talking anyway i'll tell you more about that later yeah. But but it is. It's for the betterment of all. You know, I had a guy that wore me out for eight years. Dennis, is there not an air, airstrip in the village? Can I not have an airstrip in the village? Y'all know where the airstrip is. This guy contacted me for eight years. He has a property just outside the village. You drive across the creek to his airstrip and you come back into his house. I'm like, why didn't you just buy something outside the village but, and build yeah. your own airstrip? But Anyway, but you talk about the geodesic George, uh, houses, George. I'm thinking about the, uh, what is it, octagons up on top of Macero. Yeah. Those things are for sale every other week. I don't know what the deal is, but, you know, the one down on the straight stretch, you know, up, up on top of the ridge. I, I've been here, I guess, 20 years, and I think I've seen that thing sell six or seven times. I, I don't know why. It's those odd, irregular houses like that that, you know, that people don't actually help themselves with, if you know what I mean. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And but, you know, there's those who want it. And so yeah. you don't want yeah. to say no right off the yeah. bat. But let's see what we can do to get, make it happen. Well, George, I don't know if you remember uh, right there. Oh, goodness. At the bottom, when you turn and come up from Cortez and you go way up the steep hill and turn back left to get up on Macero that way, right there at that corner, there was a house that a lady and this is during the 2006, 2007 thing with uh um, in RPI, there was a lady that bought a house there and she was from Arizona and she wanted to build an Adobe house and she brought in all the dirt and she had it all lined up and she started building it just like she wanted. And we had one of those uh, classic Arkansas rains that were six or seven inches over a 24 hour period. <laughs> and, and George, the, the bottom wall did this. It literally oh. weaved back and forth. I mean, 12 to 18 inches. And she was just so upset. Well, you know, those are different building conditions. Yeah. The POA put a stop work on it. It had Chriswell architect come out from Benton. They told her what she needed to do to build, put these steel braces in and whatever. And she was mad as a wet hen. She was so aggravated. I'm like, they are doing you a favor. Yes. Do you think, do. do you think after this house gets built, that that one six to seven inch rain is, is a fluke? Well, we have those over a couple of years or every few months. 
<laughs> and and the the inspectors, like I'm talking about George and the POA, actually was trying to save her from herself. If that made any sense, right, George? It does. It does. Yeah. Oh my goodness. And this year, can you imagine the rain we've had this year? What it would have been. <clears throat> Well, you know, we just did a show with Ken Unger and he was talking about how we had eight inches over a 24 hour period, eight and a half over a 24 hour period. And he said they realize now that there are some places that I mean, what would you ever think you would have that kind of rain ever, ever, ever? And he made note that, you know, some people that he had been saying, don't push your leaves off in the ditch. That's a bad idea. Well, now their yards floating and their garage is flooded. And he's like, remember when I said, don't put your garage, your, your leaves down the ditch? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Well, it's it's that, not that always water's got to go somewhere. It's going to yeah. go somewhere. And if it don't go somewhere, it's coming back on you. Right. <laughs> you <know>. yeah. <laughs> so do y'all have do you, and I'm just being nosy right now. Do you have any listings that are going on that you would like to promote or anything? Well, you know, the, the inventory is pretty low these days. That's I, true. What, I tell, what I tell people is we've got more people trying to get here than trying <laughs> to leave. And and so when we have a listing, I don't have one that I can share with you, but thank you okay. for asking. No, that's fine. That's fine. That's fine. And and I think, and obviously it's not just that your listings, I mean, any that, that are available that, you know, you know what I mean. And obviously same phone number, same information and whatever, if you want to have a, a guide to learn more about the village, but you know, I think George and, and Brenda both, I think you're on a real path. And I remember starting this some 23 years ago when I was just selling a couple of lots it's an education process. There's a lot of education to to make you a well informed buyer. George takes a few hours, doesn't it? It does. Uh, it truly does. As a matter of fact, we are at <clears throat> George is at the the visitor center more than I am. But when we do a tour of the village, it's three hours. Oh yeah, yeah. It, yeah it's yeah. three hours. We will wear you down, but you will learn a lot about the village, and and it's very. They walk away either loving us or not, but yeah. mainly they do love it. But you've got to go through that. And the earlier you understand the village, the better off you are. Yeah. yeah. Well, and <clears throat> it, uh, yeah, what was, I think John Paul was on one of our shows one time. I thought this was a great idea. He said, I think it might not be a bad idea if you have to live here three years before you can run for the board. I think that's a grand idea. I yeah. thought that was a great idea. And and I don't, I, I'm not trying to, you know, yeah. negate anybody that wants to come in and, and volunteer and get right on the board and, and help or whatever. But there's so much to learn. I mean, there is yeah, so is. much. And there's 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 the facts as you're presenting them. And that that's what you have to do. <laughs> there's also subtle nuances, you know, that that's not a good idea to do that. That wouldn't be the good neighbor thing. And that's not kind of the villager way or whatever. Uh we, you know, we have four Airbnbs here and we're primarily on, well, we're completely on the West end. We're all on Lake DeSoto and we'll have people come in the East gate from Benton and they're like, oh, we just came in the gates. We'll be there in a couple of minutes. I'm like, no, you're, you're about 20 minutes away. You, <laughs> you, you, oh, no, no, no. It won't take us 20 minutes. We're going good. I'm like, it's going to take you about 20 minutes. I promise it, it. I've done this a thousand times and it always takes about 20 minutes. So you need to, you know, kind of factor that in, you know. So Dennis, you've got some Airbnbs, mm -hmm. right? Yep. You know what would look really good on the coffee table in your Airbnb? One of those books. One of those books. That would look, you know what the problem would be? Thebes, Thebes, they would take them with them. I'm it's sure. Okay, you just call us and we'll give you a note. <clears throat> I will, I'll tell you what, I'll be happy to do that. And I'll tell you what, I'm gonna give another plug here real quick. And we, as we wrap up, thank y'all for joining us today, by the way. Our pleasure. Uh, Mr. Joey Clampett made note also that it would be a great idea when people check in, if they literally had a brochure on their table mm -hmm. that said, Clampett's Country Kitchen, here's the, we, we'll deliver, we'll, you know, whatever. And I thought, man, that's a, that is a heck of an idea. That really is. Cause you know, George, you said it first question you wouldn't mention, but my I'm more, yeah. I'm more indelicate than you are. So <laughs> I took care of that. But the second question is where do we eat? It you is. know? And the third question is how does exactly. this place run? And, I think it's fair to say it, it runs no, like no other place you've ever seen in your life. Uh, and I, I, I make note, and I don't know that you, I think you probably know this, but you know, when the board is sworn in, every time there's a new board member sworn in, one, one way or the other, there is a member of the law team, of the legal team that comes in and says, you are in a unique position. There's there You have no peers. There's not another HOA or POA in the United States that has 34,000 members 
There's not another one that has 26,000 acres, nine golf courses, 11 lakes, 30 miles of hiking trails. Let's go down the whole list, right? Right. It's a unique and distinct place, and, and it takes a little learning, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, I tell you what, here's the bottom line. Did you have anything else you wanted to add real quick? Not really. Yeah. I, I think we've, we've handled, I, I think I, the visitor center here at the chamber has started a program uh, that actually allows things like this to be uh, offered up there. Really? And uh, to the degree that we can keep it furnished with copies of this thing, Great because idea. it's just done, you're looking at the main producers <laughs> of this. I, I know the guy. I know the guy. Yeah, the, know the, assembly guy. Line. the assembly line right here. But uh, we will have these uh, on display at the visitor center. Okay. And, 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 and let me make note real quick. The visitor center is as you enter the West gate, that's the one off highway seven from Jesseville. Before you come into the gate, turn immediately to the right into the shopping center there and basically drive to the far left-hand side of that. And the, 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 uh, the chamber of commerce is located right there, right? Right. Right hand side, actually. Right hand side of the good. building, left hand side yeah. of the parking lot kind of thing. Yeah. Something like Got that. It. Got Pull it. in the parking lot, turn left, look right. Yeah. Sweet 300. Sweet 300. Sweet. Well, it's yeah. right there beside yeah. where they put the Christmas lights. I love that show. <laughs> I mean, maybe I'm a kid, but I could watch those Christmas lights all night long. I don't know. Yeah. Cheryl does a real good job. With does that. Really does job. a great job of that. Well, anyway, thanks for visiting. I'll tell you what I want to repeat, uh, Brenda, I'm going to give it again here real quick. Hang on. Let me, uh, 501-226-8781, 501-226-8781. And I'll primarily get the smart one. Or the pretty one, which, which, so Brenda, you answer the phone or what, or the, or both. It could be Am both, I the right? smart one or the pretty one? Yeah, both. Both, both, both coach. Both. I'll answer the phone. George is I'll like answer. me. He wildly overmarried. It's not his fault. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Thank you. There is a story there, but we, we can go into it right now. <laughs> we're we're no. going to do that one on the next show, George. How about that? There you go. Thank well, you. Thank you. We appreciate you. It's been a pleasure. For Hot Springs Village Inside Out, I'm Dennis Simpson, and we will. See you next time. Thanks for watching and listening to Hot Springs Village Inside Out, a weekly podcast starring Hot Springs Village, Arkansas. Visit the website at hotspringsvillageinsideout.com.